Fisher. If you've recently purchased a Canon R5 and started processing those images in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, you may have been disappointed with the results, particularly if you compare that same RAW file processed in Canon's own proprietary software, Digital Photo Professional. The two really look like night and day, at least to my eyes. So normally what happens is when a new camera gets released, Adobe creates a camera matching profile for that camera. But in the case of the R5, that hasn't happened yet. And if we look at the history of these profiles being released, Adobe hasn't actually released one since the EOS R, and that was quite a long time ago. So most of us who are using Adobe products and also shooting these new Canon bodies are in a little bit of a position here. We have to decide whether to continue accepting subpar results from Adobe software or to change the way we work and use other software products for at least some of the stages in processing. One of the valid workflows is to take these images, these raw files, into DPP, process them there at least to a, a, an initial stage and get the picture styles sorted out and the colors sorted out, and then bring them back into Photoshop or Lightroom for finishing off and perhaps cataloging. But let's face it, that's quite a clunky and slow way of working, particularly when we factor in that Canon's DPP is not the easiest piece of software to use and, and can be quite slow to operate. I'd prefer a third option, and it's the one that originally Adobe would have supplied itself, a camera matching profile. Now, if Adobe won't supply them, there's no reason why we can't build our own. <laughs> I quickly discovered that there were going to be a range of different outcomes in this process. And one of the first ones that I found was using this X-Rite Color Checker Passport. This matches the output of the R5 to the standard colors that we see in the passport and actually resolves a lot of the issues with color reproduction in Lightroom and Photoshop. But that's not actually what I was setting out to try to achieve. Instead, what I want to do is match the output that I see in Digital Photo Professional with the output that I see in Lightroom and Photoshop. I want to make them the same. And that is a harder road to travel, involving things like lookup tables, where we have to change the hue of the colors that we see. We also have to change those hues in different conditions, scenes, brightnesses, white balances, and that requires a whole lot of extra work in a third-party piece of software that I purchased specifically for this project. On the screen, I've got two windows open. The right-hand one is Canon's DPP with a standard picture style loaded. And on the left, I've got Lightroom open with an Adobe standard profile loaded. I've got a split screen in there with a before and after, and I'll show you why just now. This is the original image that I first noticed the color problem on. If I look at the chest of this masked weaver in the Adobe standard profile, I recognize that there wasn't any orange in it. And that's not true to life for these birds. They have oranges in the chest and on the, the, the head as well. And you can see that is true in the digital photo professional faithful picture style. You can see oranges in the head and orange tones and hues, sorry, in the feathers going down below the mask and into the chest. And you can even see little white patches and this acidic sort of lemon yellow as well, that variation in hue across those feathers. Have a look at the Adobe profile. It's flat and there's no variation in hue. And that means when you adjust the saturation in this bird and try and pump it up, all it does is makes the yellows more acidic and in your face. It doesn't bring out any of those oranges because effectively the profile can't see the oranges. As this. It's as if they're not in the spectrum. And if you look at the background uh, in front of the chest of the bird, you'll see that the oranges are not in the spectrum there because this background is sort of uh, anemic brown, sort of yellowish mud compared to this rather nice copper tone that we get in the picture style from DPP. So how do we address that? Well, I've applied my own standard camera matching profile to the split screen on the right of uh, the Adobe Lightroom window. And if I drag this bird over to the right, 
hopefully you can see the changes that occur across the chest. You can start to see the oranges come out, the hues come out in the head, the chest. The feather detail is, uh, has a little bit of more, more contrast interest to it, and it matches much more closely to the picture style that you see on the right of the screen. Have a look at the background of the bird as well. It's, it's much, much, much closer. Let's take a look at another example. I've got a black wing stilt on the screen in front of me on the right in Canon DPP with a faithful picture style on the left in Adobe Lightroom with a Adobe Color Profile. And I hope you can see immediately that the left-hand side, the Adobe side, shifts much more to the yellows and greens and the Canon picture style shifts much more to the the coppers and the magenta. And you can see that particularly in the water and also in the chest feathers of the bird. You have a yellowy, a yellower chest feather in the left-hand image than the one on the right. Now you might think that we can address this quite simply by changing the tint to a more magenta tint. So let's up that tint a little bit and have a look at the bird. The bird does change. The whites change a little bit more to the magenta and they do start to match a little bit better. But let's have a look at the image as a whole. Look at the water on the right hand side. That's too much magenta. We have to change color again. We have to make more adjustments. But more importantly, let's look at this hue in the reflections here. It really is nowhere near the copperiness and the richness that we see out of the DPP file. So how do we address that issue? Well, we can come down to the camera calibration panel here and we can start to adjust the green primary. And as I move it over to the right, all the way over to the right, you might see here, I start to get that richer color appear. It's a bit brighter and perhaps a bit more saturated. So let's adjust the blacks down quite considerably. Oh, a lot it would seem. And the whites as well. Let's bring the saturation down. And we're starting to get something that might approximate the Canon DPP file. Now remember, this isn't about which one you like better. It's about which one's accurate to the picture style presented by the Canon camera. Personally, I like the right-hand image better. So we can adjust images using the calibration panel to a certain degree, but it's complex because we can't apply that adjustment uniformly across lots of different images because that green green primary will throw them out. They won't be the same. There's a better way to address this problem than messing around with camera calibration. If I reset the image on the left and I come simply up to the profile browser and choose my faithful rendition of this bird, you'll see that that rich copper comes back very clearly into the picture. The blues are more similar. They're not as shifted to the, the purple as they were and the chest on this bird has those magenta tones, all with the click of one button. Although I'm a wildlife photographer, a nature photographer, I think it's probably important that we look at the portrait profile for those of you who like to actually photograph people. Now you can see on the screen that that's not me. I don't like photographing people and I'm absolutely hopeless at it. So I sort of tried to take a picture of myself and use my flesh tones, which are not the most attractive to, uh, to just illustrate the differences between the profiles. So on the right, as usual, we've got Digital Photo Professional now with a Canon uh, portrait profile, picture style, sorry, selected. And on the left, we have the Adobe portrait profile. If we compare these files, we can see the Adobe profile is a lot flatter. So what can we do about that? Well, I'm just gonna switch on my portrait profile, which is down here. And you can see that the saturation has come back in and there's uh, definitely a difference and it probably approximates the picture on the right a little bit better, but it's still not quite the same. And I want to show you something very clever in the Canon software. If I open up the adjustments panel 
for the Canon photograph on the right, and I scroll to the bottom, there's an item called Color Tone. And if I shift this color tone, you'll see my skin goes yellow in the right, on the right-hand image. That's all the way to the right. And if I shift it all the way to the left, it goes sort of a apoplectic purple. And this color tone slider is not something that we have in Adobe software, but it's absolutely brilliant. And it really helps to adjust the difficulties with flesh tones that we see in a lot of portrait photography. So if I want to do the same thing using Adobe software, so you can see I'm probably a little bit too uh, purple in this photograph on the left, the Adobe profile that I've got loaded. So let's, let's try and address that. And we're gonna go back to our old friend. So we're in my portrait profile, the one that I've made for the R5. If I go back to my old friend down the bottom here, the camera calibration tool, the item that's the same or roughly the same as the color tone slider that we see in DPP is the green primary. If I slide it all the way to the right, you can see I turn even more uh, purple and all the way to the left, I, I turn even more yellow. So if I'm in the middle here, I just need to reduce the purples a little bit in my skin, bring back a little bit more of that yellow, maybe to about there. And I probably need to just desaturate this image very slightly. And hopefully there we can see that we've got a fairly reasonable match between Lightroom and DPP for a portrait, which uh, I must say has been the most difficult, absolutely the most difficult profile to try and re-engineer in Adobe software. One thing we need to talk about, or one aspect we need to talk about between DPP and Adobe uh, is the, the noise issue that we see in the images. Now, DPP has quite a good model for reducing noise, but I just want to show you a comparison between Lightroom and DPP of this Blackwing Stilt. Now, this image was shot uh, pre-dawn at ISO 6400, so quite a high ISO on the camera. And if we look at the defaults in Adobe, which is on the left-hand side of the screen, and the default on DPP, we can see that the sharpening applied by Adobe is far higher than we see in DPP. And that makes a lot of sense when we consider the noise in the image. If we look over here on the right side in the water and have a look at the noise characteristics, well, that sharpening has really brought in the noise in the Adobe profile. So the default uh, settings in the detail screen in Adobe are just not sympathetic to an R5 file. So if we bring that file into Adobe and we get upset about noise, well, you know, let's just change some of the settings here and see what we can achieve. First off, we've got way too much sharpening. So let's go back to the face of this bird and just see if we can bring the sharpening back in line with what we see in DPP. So let's open the detail screen here. Let's bring this right down, bring it to around 10, okay? The next thing we need to do is we need to consider detail and radius. So these, these sliders are important when we crop an image. This image is completely uncropped. So I'm gonna bring this radius down a bit to about, let's say to about one, okay? Because the image is uncropped. It would be smaller if it was cropped perhaps. And detail seriously doesn't need to be so high either. Now, before I bring in luminance, uh, I want to just address the idea of color noise, so chrominance noise, and uh, chroma noise. And if we go and look at the right-hand side of the image, at the water here, in both DPP uh, and Adobe, I want to just drag this color slider off from the default 25 all the way off to the left. And can you see the difference in the water here where we get these patches of yellows and purples and, uh, and color noise coming into the image. That is what this slider addresses. It makes the image more colorful if we drag it to the left, but more noisy in terms of color noise and less colorful if we drag it to the right. And this slider is actually part of the profile issue, the color issue that we're seeing with our five files because it takes a lot of that color out of the file. 
For me, 25, the default is way too high. I think it needs to be much lower than that, probably around, gosh, we can get away with about 10 here. The other thing that we should consider is the smoothness and the detail. We do not need detail in nature images, in the color. We can take that right down and we can increase the smoothness right up here to the 90s. And that has helped the colors out in the image and it's also uh, reduced the noise characteristics that we see in the Adobe profile. Now let's drag on some luminance. To do that, let's go and look at the face of the bird just to get an idea of how much we should drag on to make it equivalent to the DPP file. So let's drag this luminance slider up and we can see that it's up quite a long way to get it roughly equivalent, probably around 31% at the moment. Let's go and look at what that did to the noise on the right of the screen here after we drag the luminance slider up. And it is far less bad than it used to be and much closer to what we see in DPP. But we've got one final adjustment left. We've got a masking adjustment which is roughly uh, similar to Unsharp Mask in, in DPP and that's going to also help us. If I drag on this masking so that we're masking out most of this area in the water, we'll see that the noise is far better controlled now than it was. But what about the bird itself? If we go and have a look at the bird, we'll see that we're sort of the same, but I think it's probably a little bit sharper at larger scale in the DPP image. And for that, we need to not be in the detail panel in Lightroom. We need to come up to texture and clarity. Let's slide up the texture here, and this is going to increase the evidence of detail in the larger structures in the photograph. So if we up texture, we can probably pull down clarity to compensate a little bit for that. And now we have roughly analogous sharpening in these two pictures. And hopefully we have far better controlled noise in the image than we did before. Now it's not as good as DPP. There's no question it's not as good, but it's still a lot better than it was. If I do it before and after, have a look at the difference between the quarter, quarter panel on the top and the quarter panel on the bottom. How much better is the noise characteristics after making those minor adjustments? Now with detail like this on a large picture that's not being cropped, you can actually set this up as a preset and apply this in one shot. And with third-party plugins like Topaz Denoise and DxO Pure Raw, you can go further with the noise reduction and get it much, much, much better but I just wanted to show that all of the complaints about Lightroom's noise characteristics in the R5 file, although semi-justified, they can be reduced to quite a significant degree by just sympathetically processing the file and actually thinking about what's going on with that raw image. All of these profiles are for sale on my website for a nominal fee for the amount of hours that I spent making them. If you'd like to try them out, you're welcome to go and visit the site and see what they can do for you. And I hope this video has helped to clarify some of the issues around the R5 files and other Canon files that you bring into Lightroom. And perhaps for some of you who are shooting other brands of cameras and other models of cameras that are unsupported in Lightroom, you might have a think about creating your own profiles now and maybe using one of these to help you along. And if you're interested, uh, let me know down below whether you're interested in more videos about how to actually make the profiles, the details of making the profiles, uh, or whether that's just too technical and you're not. Uh, I'll see you next time.